you haven't seen how the Rockler one works yet. Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here happens to be, once again, in the future home of my shop. And we're here for the Q&A for the Rockler 45 degree miter slider, what was supposed to be a Q&A. I'm thinking that this is gonna be both a Q&A and an actual use video because I think I have a solution. So first, let's go over your questions, comments, and cheap shots, beginning with Tom. So Tom said, by the time you spend money building a second tabletop with DIY components, it seems just easier to buy the Shopsmith version. Yeah, if that's what we have to do, then it might be easier. I don't think that's what we have to do. David, channel member, thank you very much, David, said it might be worth the $22 to some folks to use the Rockler miter sled to set your Shopsmith miter gauge to an exact 45 degrees like you would with the four, the $94 miter set from Shopsmith. That's an interesting thought. Um, can we do that? Um, forget the fact that I still have part of the Miter Pro attached here. Could you, in fact, use this to set your miter gauge to 45 degrees? That's an interesting, interesting thought. So if I slide this against the bar, mm, guess what? Maybe, maybe, just maybe, I could lock that in using that, something like a square. I, I, you know, I don't think so. I, I've seen better 45 degree miter squares that would do this job better than this. So I, I don't think I would buy this just to set the Shopsmith miter gauge, but good thought, David. Well, here was a surprise entry. Got a response from Rockler. Rockler, thanks for popping in. Rockler said, um, thanks for the feedback. We'll pass this along to our product development team. I hope you're watching this video because there still might be some ideas that you could use. Um, Glenn, not Sandy, channel member, thank you, Glenn, said, another shortcoming of the Rockler model is it doesn't have the long 24-inch rail with the built-in stop. You haven't seen how the Rockler one works yet. You're right, it doesn't have that, but they have a kind of a workaround. Anyway, add to that the versatility of the Shopsmith model being able to create an extension fence like we just showed. Um, uh, and you have a great reason to stick with the Shopsmith. Even at the higher price point, it would have been even better if Shopsmith had created a mounting point on that long fence so it could be used as a fence on the cast iron bandsaw table. It can be used as a fence, but I, I get your point. His point is if they had added uh, kind of a midpoint um, mounting. Use double-sided tape. You can do it and attach it that way. Perhaps a clever person could make that modification. Best, uh, best of, of all worlds. Yeah, thank you, Glenn, for your thoughts on that. Um, Tim says, I would remove the built-in miter bar and attach a Shopsmith miter bar, or perhaps a wood miter bar, to the two slots behind the molded miter bar. So um, basically he was saying that he would, he, this is cast plastic, that he would remove this and add a bar somewhere that would connect through these slots. Um, I'm not sure how we would accomplish that, Tim. But again, I thank you for your thinking on that. And Tom from Woodshop Nerdery, he and I think alike on this. And he says, you could move the table enough to the right to cheat it in between the blade and the slot. So this is what we're going to But first we have a problem we need to solve, and that is the fact that this sits on the table and the, the bar is bottoming out in the bottom of the miter slot. So it's sitting kind of wonky. So for now, I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is just fill in some of this space with some uh, fast cap, uh, what do they call this stuff? Fast edge, I think, something like that. Um, it's, it's a uh, basically a plastic laminate with a peel and stick backing on it. It's going to take three, maybe four layers to do this. And I'm just going to lay on a couple strips of this and we'll see how this works. All right. So I, I've just cut a couple strips of this, kind of eyeballing it, a 45 degree angle, close to it anyway. And then we'll put this on. keeping it in from the edges so it doesn't interfere with our wood. And we'll press that down. 
think I'm going to make that all. That one's a little bit longer. All right, let's see, does that solve the problem? I do believe so. I believe we are no longer teeter-tottering. So there's problem number one solved. So you can see we still have the problem, though, that we're going to cut off the tip of the jig. So here's what Tom and I were both thinking. If we remove the upper saw guard, remove the table insert, check out what we can do. We're going to take the table insert out. And I'm loosening the headstock now, and I'm sliding everything off to the left. Now, does that give us the clearance we need? It absolutely would give us the clearance. So let's get over to about there. And now what we need, a table insert, and plunge this in at that distance from the edge. So in a previous video, I talked about how easy it is to make these inserts out of masonite, quarter-inch masonite or hardboard. Uh, but some people had commented how there were a couple of resellers that were making inserts, and perhaps those were worth buying. I had no experience with them. Uh, Shopsmith, of course, makes a zero clearance insert. So I purchased a couple. Um, this one right here I purchased off of Amazon, and this one, can you tell where I bought this one? So this one that came from uh, eBay is made of masonite. However, they used eighth inch masonite and backed it up with a hardwood looks like oak and uh, I mean really nice finish but I don't know I don't know why they went to that trouble we're not using this one today we're gonna go ahead and use the plastic one because I've made my own before I've never seen this particular model so we will try it out this one this one is made of phenolic resin um, which is pretty much a bulletproof material and uh, let's get this on here and we'll plunge it down on the moving blade. Oh, we don't quite line up. We don't quite line up with the holes. Oh, that's not good. So I guess we are, I guess we are gonna go ahead and use this masonite and wood model. Um, on most table saws, you'd want to clamp a board over this, but because our insert is screwed down, um, the, that's not going to go anywhere. We could put our fence over it, but we want to make sure that we don't put the fence over where the blade is going to penetrate. But So you can see it. I'm going to leave this like it is. Let's make sure everything is locked down. All right. And you'll notice I plunged a little deeper than I needed to to give myself plenty of clearance front and back here. Okay, look at that. We now have the clearance that we need. All right, so let's talk about how we proceed and how this is different than the Shopsmith Miter Pro. Uh, with the Miter Pro, we had stops that we could use to, to cut our stock off to the exact length. This doesn't have that. So what you do instead, and you can see I drew some lines representing where the miters would go on the stock, you cut your pieces to the exact length that you want them to be after they're mitered. And then we're gonna to cut to the corner. And the way that we do this, and the way that we assure that we're going to get this cut right where we want it, is you use a stop block against your fence, positioning the stop block so that it puts your blade right where you want it to cut. Then the stop block is gonna be secured to the fence a bit further back here so that we're never gonna be risking having the stock in between the blade and the fence. So let's, uh, let's make a cut here and see how it goes.
Now, it didn't cut all my lines because I eyeballed those angles. The, neither of those were actually measured to 45 degrees. Um, but that was a little bit hairy. I think I would want to add some uh, sandpaper to the face of this, just like with the ShopSmith Miter Pro. Uh, let me see if I can find some sandpaper. So I know I'm mixing my products, but I, <laughs> I have some sandpaper here from, uh, from Woodcraft. We use a couple strips of this. And I've got some fast cap double-sided tape. You know, I wasn't very generous with myself on dispensing that tape. Let's, let's get a longer piece over here. All right, that should do the job. Let's make the next couple cuts. And just as before, we'll use a little blue tape. And yes, if I were gluing this, there's a whole technique. We would do this against a straight edge, slide the points down past each other, et cetera, et cetera. We're just going to throw this together real fast, see how we come out. So the Rockler 45 degree miter sled with a few modifications, a little bit of a glide strip along the bottom, some sandpaper on the face, and moving the blade over in our table insert on a ShopSmith did the trick. Um, I absolutely for, you know, what was it, less than 30 bucks. I think I could endorse this. As always, the link is down below. Be sure to check it out and uh, make it a great day.